behavior in court was very different to that of 19-year-old Keandra Cook, a high school student who used a dating app to set up a robbery scheme with her boyfriend, Kendrick Bass. Cook lured Perry Nida, a Palm Coast man, to a secluded spot in South Daytona, where Bass and others attacked him and his friend, Emmanuel Purcell, who had accompanied him. Bass shot Purcell in the chest, but luckily he survived. However, what Cook did in the courtroom was even crazier. Cook was arrested and charged with principal to carjacking with a deadly weapon and principal to aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. Okay, of all three charges, sentence you to 20 years in state prison. <laughs> Cook was later allowed to withdraw her plea and cooperate with the state to testify against Bass, who was also charged with attempted murder. She entered a new plea deal and received a reduced sentence of 11 years in prison and 20 years of probation. She apologized to the victims and their families. I just want to say that I'm sorry to the mom that her son had been shot, that I didn't even know he was going to get shot. Um, my boyfriend and his friends would get me to do this. However, this wasn't the only time a convict freaked out during their sentencing. Your son is the victim and the killer is your granddaughter. Can you talk about that? Mm. She's not my granddaughter. Take, for example, the case of 16-year-old Sierra Halseth and 18-year-old Aaron Guerrero. Where did the evil come that was bred into a soul that murders their own father? Who are facing multiple charges, including murder with a deadly weapon, arson, robbery with a deadly weapon, conspiracy to conduct robbery, and multiple counts of fraudulent use of credit or debit cards at the Regional Justice Center in Las Vegas. The teenage couple murdered Sierra's father, 45-year-old Daniel Halseth. They stabbed him over 60 times and attempted to burn his body and house. Then, they took his debit card and fled to Salt Lake City, indulged themselves, and opened a YouTube channel where they callously shared information like this. Day three after <laughs> murdering somebody. Whoa! Don't put that on the camera. The teenagers dated in 2020, but their parents did not approve of the relationship, forcing them to end it. On April 9th, 2021, Daniel's lifeless body was discovered in the garage of his Las Vegas home. The teenagers were subsequently apprehended in Salt Lake City. Throughout the court proceedings, the behavior of Sierra was starkly different from that of Aaron. Aaron Guerrero seemed to be emotionally breaking down. When he was allowed to speak, he had this to say. I ask for forgiveness and I get, as I get sentenced today, and I hope it brings you a little peace. Meanwhile, Sierra Halseth appeared disinterested, bored, and detached from the gravity of the situation. She claimed that her father had physically and sexually abused her. He locks me in place and starts pushing me and hitting me around. Eventually, they were both found guilty by District Judge Chiara Jones. 55 days credit for time served. That is a total aggregate sentence of life in the Nevada Department of Corrections with the possibility of parole after 22 years of good service. And ordered to pay $5,000 in restitution. For Sierra's grandmother, a lot has changed. You're in a tough spot because your son is the victim and the killer is your granddaughter. Can you talk about that? Mm. The same can't be said for the case of 19-year-old Brandon Spencer, who allegedly started shooting at a crowded Halloween party on the campus of the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. I'm sorry for what happened here, but can't you like the prison? Four individuals were injured in the shooting, but fortunately, there were no fatalities. That if you are so intent on killing someone, that you're willing to shoot them, and at the same time, open fire into a crowd. Following the shooting, Spencer was detained by the Los Angeles Police Department for questioning. A couple of days later, he was charged with four counts of attempted murder. The prosecution argued during the trial that the shooting was the result of an ongoing feud between Spencer and a rival gang member, noting that Spencer himself was a documented and well-known gang member. I'm not a bad person, but I made mistakes. Despite the horrifying nature of Spencer's offenses, his actions during the trial managed to shock everyone present. Throughout the trial, Spencer maintained his innocence, but the jury disagreed. Spencer also pleaded his case. The judge sentenced Brandon Spencer to 40 years to life in prison for the four counts of attempted murder 
When Spencer heard his sentence, this was his reaction. However, while Spencer's behavior raised eyebrows, let's not forget the infamous incident involving 15-year-old Martise Fuller, who's facing charges including murder in Kenosha County, Wisconsin. I stopped in my doorway and I looked at him and I said, oh my God, Martise. I said, please, you don't have to do this. And he looked at me and he said, yes, I do. Fuller broke into his ex-girlfriend's house with a handgun and fatally shot his ex-girlfriend in her bedroom while she was listening to music. Her mother, who rushed to the scene upon hearing the gunshots, confronted the assailant and was shot twice, but survived. During the trial, he showed little emotion. Fuller pleaded not guilty, but the jury ultimately found him guilty on three counts. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first-degree intentional homicide. At his sentencing, Fuller, perhaps for the first time in the courtroom, displayed some emotion. However, he continued to assert his innocence and delivered a statement through his attorney, expressing his apologies to the family. Mr. Fuller's prepared a statement that he asked that I read on his behalf. Martise writes, wholeheartedly, I wanted to write this giving my sincerest apologies to this family I once shared time and love with. Truthfully, I am sorry about the pain you've all suffered through this but more importantly, the loss of my ex-girlfriend Kaylee that I loved too. So I am sorry. Despite the hatred that is against me, I still am sorry. But I have to continue to stand innocent because I am. And I know that I've barely showed emotion throughout my time, but in all honesty, it is because it's hard to have tears left to cry knowing my mom lost a son, one of her children too. But I am sorry. And I hope you all can eventually see in your hearts and vision that I am not the person the media has made me out to be. The judge, however, wasn't convinced that Fuller could do better in the future. You are a very dangerous and a damaged human being. So in the interest of protecting the public, acknowledging the seriousness of these acts, the court orders that on count one, you are sentenced to life in prison without eligibility for extended supervision. Despite the gravity of his sentence, Fuller appeared largely unaffected. However, as we saw Fuller's unconcern with his sentence to the astonishing behavior of 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz. My name is Nick, and I'm gonna be the next school shooter of 2018. My goal is at least 20 people with an AR-15 and a couple trace rounds. A gunman who carried out the deadliest high school shooting in US history. Cruz killed 17 people and wounded 17 others at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida on February 14th, 2018. Oh my God. Oh my God. He used a semi-automatic rifle that he had legally purchased a year earlier. I came out and asked him, what are you going to do with the rifle? And the reply was, I go shooting with my friends on the weekends. I just want my own stuff. Despite the horrifying nature of Cruz's offenses, his actions during sentencing managed to shock everyone present. Cruz was arrested and charged with 17 counts of premeditated first-degree murder and 17 counts of attempted first-degree murder. He pleaded guilty to all the charges, admitting his responsibility for the massacre. What's going on today, bro? The, the, the demons, man. Demons? Voices. Voices. Voices and demons. Where's the voices? Where the f am I? Holy sh What happened? Shut up. The jury could not reach a unanimous verdict on whether to recommend the death penalty for Cruz. As a result, he was automatically sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for each of the 17 murders, as required by Florida law. He was also sentenced to an additional 34 life sentences for the attempted murders. At his sentencing, Cruz attempted an apology. I am very sorry for what I did, and I have to live with it every day. And that if I were to get a second chance, I will do everything in my power to try to help others. And I am doing this for you, and I do not care if you do not believe me. And I love you, and I know you don't believe me. But I have to live with this every day. Cruz showed no remorse or empathy for his actions, and instead wore a red prison jumpsuit, glasses, and a mask. He even laughed at one point during the proceedings. Cruz's lack of emotion and his escape from the death penalty outraged and disappointed many of the victim's relatives who had hoped for a different outcome. 
However, while it was clear that Cruz didn't care about the years he was going to spend in jail, it brings to mind the strikingly similar response of Jennifer Mee. When I walked off, I was to the corner. I heard the first gun shot after the first gun shot. I ran. At 15, Jennifer Mee became popular as the Hiccup Girl due to her sudden bout of uncontrollable hiccups. She even appeared on shows and events. Eventually, she was cured and her popularity ended. But Jennifer wasn't satisfied. She needed the fame. So she and her boyfriend, Lamont Newton, and another friend, Lauren Rayford, set up a robbery with victims she had met online. The trio lured a 22-year-old man to a vacant home where they robbed and fatally shot him, taking $50 as the reward. As if Jennifer's offenses weren't enough, her demeanor in court will leave you dumbfounded. At 19 years old, she was arrested on charges of first-degree murder. During her trial, this recorded call she made to her mother while in detention was played for the jury. Hello. Hi, Mama. Hello, Jennifer. What's going on? I'm in jail. Why are you in jail? From, um, it's first degree, I mean, murder in the first degree. Who did you kill? I didn't kill nobody. It, it all went wrong, Mama. Who are you trying to kill, Jennifer? Jennifer was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Jennifer's co-defendants, Rayford and Newton, were also sentenced to life imprisonment for their roles in the murder. However, when emotions run high in court, the actions of Jennifer Mee and a 14-year-old Philip Chisholm. He is pure evil, and evil can never be rehabilitated. You must imprison this killer for the rest of his life. A ninth grader who's in court for murdering his 24-year-old school math teacher, Colleen Ritzer, on October 22, 2013. Colleen was known for her dedication to her students, and on that fateful day, she had asked Chisholm to stay after school for additional lessons. Little did she know that her kindness would lead to a horrific end. Chisholm came prepared with a knife, a change of clothes, and gloves. He followed her into a restroom where he took her life. His brutality didn't stop there robbed, assaulted, and abused her. Afterward, he disposed of her lifeless body by placing it in a garbage bin and dragging it behind the school. In a futile attempt to cover up his crimes, Chisholm went into town and used Richard's credit card to buy a movie ticket. However, he was traced down and arrested by the police the next morning. He still had Colleen's blood on his hands. While the magnitude of Chisholm's crimes is daunting, his courtroom behavior will leave you in disbelief. Philip Chisholm faced multiple charges, including murder, aggravated rape, and armed robbery. Throughout the court proceedings, Chisholm displayed a shocking lack of remorse, even as the victim's father read his statement. Killer knew exactly what he was doing and has never shown remorse. His demeanor and actions demonstrated a complete disregard for the gravity of his crimes and the immeasurable pain he had inflicted on Colleen Ritzer's family. Even in the face of a touching tribute by Colleen's brother, Put this animal behind bars for the maximum possible sentence. Do not give this coward the opportunity to shatter another family's lives. Chisholm remained cold and unrepentant. His attorneys claimed that he was mentally unstable. That didn't work. In February 2016, the court will impose the mandatory life sentence for the murder of Colleen Ritzer and set a parole eligibility date of 25 years, the highest level our law allows. However, while Chisholm's reaction could certainly be dismissed as an effect of a mental illness, how does it compare to the reaction of 16-year-old Dylan Schumacher, who was in Buffalo, New York courthouse? I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury, and they're going to feel sorry for me. On charges of second-degree murder. In March 2013, Schumacher was babysitting his 18-year-old girlfriend's child while she went to work. He was inside a Springville home shared with his parents. Tragically, that evening, Schumacher beat the 23-month-old Austin to death. Following this horrifying incident, Schumacher was arrested and charged with the murder of the toddler, along with child abuse charges. Schumacher claimed he didn't intend to harm the child or cause his death, stating that he was trying to get the child to stop crying. At 16, you knew not to keep pounding your fist on that pillow with that little baby's head there. That little boy had to be terrified. Probably he had a hard time breathing. And then you repeatedly punched him so hard as to cause his death by bleeding on the brain. If you thought Schumacher would be remorseful for his crimes, you're wrong. As Schumacher entered the courtroom for his sentencing, he couldn't even get settled behind the defense table before breaking into tears. That's right. Schumacher expressed how sorry he was for his actions. I take back what was done. 
I wish I could. I would give my life for Austin. However, it was all an act, and the judge wasn't fooled. The judge pointed out a recorded phone call between Schumacher and his mother. The record will show that you admitted on July, that on July 23rd, 2013, in a phone call to your mother from the holding center, you stated, and I got a quote from the court reporter, I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury, and they're going to feel sorry for me. Despite his second attempt at an apology, Schumacher was handed the maximum punishment of 25 years to life in prison. However, this sentence was later modified to 18 years to life.